Okay, welcome back. Today we're going to start something new. Now, today we're going to start on something called a linked list. Now, we've learned all about pointers and we've spent quite a bit of time learning about how pointers work. So today is going to be a lesson that is going to utilize this knowledge of pointers in order to create a data structure called a linked list. Now, let's create one. Now, first of all, kind of have to show what a linked list is. So a linked list consists of some type of an object that has data in it, but also has a pointer in it as well that can point to something else. And when you have this type of an object, then this pointer that is contained within this object can point to an object of the same type. So this one will also have data, but it will also have a pointer. And this pointer in turn can point to another object of the same type, which will also have data and which will also have a pointer. As you can see, this is what is called, and by the way, you might say, okay, well, where does this last pointer point to? Where does it go to? And usually what we do is with the very last one, we make it point to uh, a null pointer or zero. In this way, this data structure is called a linked list. Now you might ask, well, why don't we just create one right now and s just see what it kind of looks like. So why don't we do that? So let's go over to our code. So here's our code. And what I have done, this is kind of interesting. Now before I move forward, I just want to show you this. I'm going to make a struct. And so this is going to be called, this struct is going to be called a node. I'm calling it a node. That's the classic term used for linked list. So in, essentially now what I'm saying here is that this object here is a node. And it can, a node contains two things. It contains some data. Here's my data. And I'll call it a string s. And it also contains, now here's the weird thing, I can't put a node within a node. That would be like a recursive definition. So obviously, if I did that, if I was to ever create a node, if it, if it was even possible, then it would never really finish being created because it would say, okay, well, you have a node inside the node, so then we have to call create a new node, but that node has a node inside, so we're gonna have to call node again but that node has a node inside. As you can see, this is never going to end. It's like a, it's an infinite recursive call. And so when you even try to compile this type of thing, um, it's not going to work. Okay. And we can even try it just to show you the error we would get. So here it is. Uh, I've just made node A and let's just see if it'll even compile. And notice I get an error. Uh, it says field next has incomplete type node, but it, it won't even allow us to create this. So this is, this is impossible. But what we can do, and this is the cool part here, is what we can do is we can actually include a node pointer inside our node type. So this struct that we've made now has two things. So if you look at the, the photo of it, it's got data here and the pointer is here, and the pointer is, we're calling it next. Okay? That's just the name of the pointer, but it is a node pointer. And this is totally okay. This is allowed. We can have a node pointer inside a node, which essentially means that it's going to point to another object of type node. Now let's make, let's make three of them here. So let's go, uh, let's come down here and let's go, uh, how about ABC? 
And after we make them, let's link them up together. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to say, now remember, this is a struct, so I can use dot notation. So I'll go a dot. First of all, before I put them together, let me give them some data. as equals, how about, let's say, um, Adam. OK? And b dot s, the string for b, let's say it's equal to uh, Bob. OK? And c dot s, let's say it's equal to Kathy. All right. Great. Now I have the, I have my nodes, but they're not linked together. So I need to put, I need to specify these two links here in the code. So let's go back and I'll specify it here. So maybe we'll leave a space here. We'll say, okay, this is where they're created. And here we'll say, think about now how I'm going to make A, the pointer of A, point to B. Essentially, if I draw a picture of this, is, right now I have three nodes, A, B, and C. <coughs> and my data here is uh, Adam, Bob, and Kathy. But that's all I've got. I haven't, I haven't specified where the pointers, what the, what the address of these pointers are. These guys have pointers, and the pointer variable is called next. Now I want to set this guy somewhere. Obviously, you can see above. I want it to point to B. But this variable here, this is called the the next one. This is the next. That's the name of the variable. Right? So when I come over to my code, all I need to do here is I need to set a dot next equal to what? The yeah, I've got to set it to the address of B. Exactly. So Following that logic, then obviously I would say b dot next should equal the address of c. Okay. And one more last one. So now I have these two pointers pointing in the right direction. Now the question is, where should the last one point to? And obviously here. I want this guy to point to 0 or null PTR because it's the end. So I'll go c.next equals 0. Now, OK, I know uh, this is probably better. Uh, this is the new way of doing it. OK? Um, but now, here I have a question for you. How could we, now before we continue, I don't actually have a pointer to this linked list. So let's make one, okay? And I'll make it a node pointer and I'll call it my, my root pointer. And I'm gonna set it equal to the address of A. Now what this does is, if I go back to my drawing, is it doesn't create another new node, but rather it creates a pointer, my root pointer, and this points to A. So that root is just simply a node pointer. It's not a node itself. But now what I want to do is I want to be able to go through this linked list and print all the names. I want to be able to print Adam, Bob, and Kathy. 
pause the video here and think about how you would do that looking at the code or maybe I can I can leave the code up and have just moved the picture over a little bit so pause the video and what I want you to think about doing is like I said print out Adam Bob and Kathy but try and think of doing it in in the form of a loop one thing I'd like you to say is let's assume that we don't know how many nodes there are so I would say don't use a for loop in this case perhaps a while loop would be better and think about what the condition of the while loop would be and remember this is all going to be using the root pointer okay because the root pointer is the, f the first the pointer that points to the whole data structure so in order to solve this problem what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change where the root pointer points to okay so let's write some let's write a while loop here because like I said I don't really know how many nodes at this point I mean I know that there's three but that, let's say there could be more so I'm gonna say while uh, root is not equal to zero and if you think about this um, so at this point roots not equal to zero it's equal to the address of a and so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to first of all I'm gonna print out what root points at so I need the s member of the struct and so this struct right I, I, I can't go see out a because I have to I have to reference what root is pointing at so therefore I'm going to dereference the root pointer which will give me a and then I will get the dot s which is the string so I'll go like this. I'll go dereference root and then I'll go dot s. Now the problem with this is is that this isn't going to work because I have to have brackets oops around my dereference. Now that should be okay. But if I run this, this is just going to give me an infinite loop and it's always going to end up printing Adam. Because if I, if I run this, let's just try it. See, it's going to give me an infinite loop running, printing Adam. That's not really what I want. I want it to be able to go to the next one. So I definitely have to do something on the next line. And if you think about it, looking at the picture, I can change where root points to. I want to go to this guy next but this guy is pointed to by the next pointer of A. So therefore, what I can say is I can say let root equal... Now, pause the video just for a sec and see if you can finish the line. Okay, so the solution is if you dereference root and then grab the next pointer, that will work. So let's try it now, and let's see if this works. Let's run it, and boom, we get Adam, Bob, Kathy. Now the nice thing is, is that once root at, is actually pointing, once it's at, um, once it's at Kathy, okay, then when we go to the next one, root is now, root does equal zero, and so we're not going to go back in here because obviously we won't be able to dereference a null pointer and our program will crash, right? Because if I move the picture over just a little bit more, and well, you can see here on line 19, I've set um, the next pointer of C equal to zero. So the, the, the while loop will terminate at that point and we're not going to dereference zero, which is good or else we'd get a segmentation fault. Now, 
this program works fine. As I said, we run it and we get the correct uh, output that we're looking for. So this is kind of like walking through the linked list. However, I don't like this syntax. Instead of this syntax here, let's um, let's oops, let's yank those two lines here, these two lines. Let's take those two lines and yank them, and let's rewrite them. So let's comment it out here. And the proper way of, I mean, not, not to say that this is wrong, it does work, but that's not the way uh, people code in C and C++. We're, we're going to code using the arrow operator. And the arrow operator works like this, right? We've already kind of gone over this. But this, I think, uh, looks better and is more um, common and everybody in the programming world understands what this, oops, this isn't supposed to be, yeah, okay, there we go. We'll just put a space here, maybe it looks better. Yeah, there we go. All right, let's try this now. Let's see if this works. Okay, so let's run it. And sure enough, we get the same thing. So let's kind of make sure we can see everything here. And that's the way that I think, it, that's the preferred way of this preferred syntax. It's also, it it's also looks nicer, the less brackets, the, the cleaner the code looks. I, ha I now have a little mini assignment for you. I want you to take a look at this while loop, and I want you to notice that in some sense, it is kind of like a, think of it almost as if it's doing the same thing to each node until you get to this end, end case situation where you have uh, a pointer that's pointing to zero, in which case you don't want to continue. Can you rewrite this while loop as a function, but I want you to create the function, make the function a recursive function. So let's call, I'll start it out for you, okay? So let's, let's call the function, um, here, let's start it up here, okay? And let's call it, now it's not going to return anything, so we'll just have it return void, but we'll call it walk. In other words, we're going to walk through the linked list, okay? And it's going to accept, this, this walk function is going to accept a node pointer and um, we'll call the node pointer NP. Now I want you to tr pause the video here and see if you can, this is, this is going to be a, rec this is a recursive function, okay? So try and see if you can write this function, pause the video now. So once again, the purpose of this walk function is to print out everything that this while loop is printing out. Okay, let's give it a shot. So if you think, if you're, once you practice doing recursive functions, you know, you're gonna say, okay, well, let's, first of all, let's print out. This is one possible way you could think about this and perhaps maybe this is what you tried. Let's print out uh, NP, the node pointers, S, ENDL, okay. And then, if, since we know it's recursive, right, it's kind of like a loop. There's, by the way, there's lots of program, there's some programming languages which don't provide you with loops, but um, only provide you with functions that you can call recursively. Those are called, uh, you know, functional programming languages. And um, 
So even though C and C++ is not that, we, we can write loops, this is a really good um, assignment or activity where you force yourself to write things recursively and it gives you great experience in that area. So in this case, I'm going to call walk. And notice walk takes a pointer. But in this case, I'm going to send it the next pointer. So now that I'm sending it the next pointer, let's see if this runs. Let's see if it runs. Let's run it. Okay. And let's see what happens. Uh, hold on a sec. OK. Uh, simple mistake. We actually need to define what the node is. And so therefore, this function has to come after the struct. So let's move it there. OK, well, uh, we better also remember to call the actual function. So let's, let's comment this out right now. And um, let's actually put in a function call to walk. And let's pass it the root pointer. OK? And let's see what happens now. And notice there it says command terminated. Now, that's actually, so if I get out of this for a second and I um, actually run it uh, like this, you'll notice that, oops, hold on a minute. Sorry, wrong function name to run. Notice I'm getting a segmentation fault. Now, getting a segmentation fault means, and I'll tell you what's happening here, we're actually dereferencing a null pointer. And you know where that's happening? It's happening on the last guy on C. So that means that we need to prevent that last one from being dereferenced. Okay? Because it, on the last time through, after we call it uh, for C, okay, so remember where does next point, n next on C is zero, right? So, so if, when it's node C's next, we pass that up here and we dereference it with the arrow operator that that's where our program is crashing. So we have to prevent that. And the way we're going to do that is we'll just say if the node pointer equals 0, then just return. Just end. Don't do anything else. OK? Now that's one way of doing it. OK, that's one way of doing it. And let's try it. Let's try it here. Now we don't get segmentation fault anymore. And it's, it's working properly. But there is another way to do this. So here's the other way to do this. And you're saying here, instead of saying if NP equals 0, return, do nothing, what we can say is if NP is not equal to 0, right? then go ahead and do that. Logically, it's the same thing. And if I run it, you'll see it works fine. We don't get the segmentation fault. Now, having said this, there is one other slight modification to this that we can make. And that is understanding that in, in CC++, when something is 0, okay, let's just, let's just think about this for a second because we have an if statement here, right? Remember, 0 is false and anything else, can't, can't type right now, anything else is true, okay? So if, if, if that's the case, then look how we can change this, even, even to make it one little tiny step even simpler. We can say if NP. Just think about that now. 
So we're taking the pointer address and we're using that as a true or false determin determinant. If it's zero, it's going to be false. And if it's something other than zero, it's going to be true. And if it's something other than zero, therefore it's not a null pointer. And so now when I run this, oops, hold on a second. I, um, I forgot my, uh, this guy. Okay, let's run it now. Now you can see it works just fine. And so um, e either, way, either one of these three ways will work. You can say if MP is equal to zero, return, do nothing, skip the rest of it, right? Or you can say if MP is not equal to zero, then go ahead and um, continue with the function. Or you can even simpler say just if the address is something, then go ahead and do it. But if the address is null, then that corresponds to false.